Hello and welcome back to learnabouteyes.com. In this episode, we're going to speak about the Goldman Applination Tonometry, or short GAT. This is a basic exam to measure the eye pressure. And while there are, of course, more simple and easy ways to measure the eye pressure, the GAT is still the gold standard and has to be learned by every new resident. This episode is going to be more of a step-by-step -step guide and some tips for the most common mistakes. So this is more for the first year resident. If you want to learn more about this very interesting technique, how it works, where it came from, I'm gonna make a subsequent video and link it up here where you can learn about the history, about the physics, about how to treat special cases. All right, so let's start with the step-by-step -step guide. First, you're gonna to wanna to apply an anesthetic eye drop to the patient's eye and put in some fluorescein dye. Some clinics have combination eye drops which contain both of these agents. The anesthetic drop can hurt pretty badly, so tell the patient the burning is gonna go away after about 10 seconds and give them a tissue in case the eye starts tearing. Then you're gonna take a clean measurement tip we have single-use tips at our clinic, but if you have the original ones, they can be re-sterilized after every patient. Make sure to slide it in correctly, so the first engraved line lines up with the white line on the measurement device. The measurement device itself is usually mounted directly to the slit lamp. You just swing it forward until it locks in place, and then make sure your measurement head is nice and straight. Switch your slit lamp to blue light and turn the brightness up as much as you can. Put it at about a 45 degree angle and then play with the light a bit until the measurement head is nicely illuminated. Now, look through the eyepieces of the slit lamp. Note that during the whole measurement you're only going to see with your right eye. This is the first time that you can see the prism that is built into the measurement head. If you want to know more about these prisms, Wait for the second, more detailed video where I'm going to tell you all about that. For now, all you have to do is make sure that the prism forms a straight horizontal line. Now you have to put in the expected eye pressure. On the side of the device, there is a wheel with a lot of numbers on it. This is where you're going to read off the eye pressure that you measured. Before you start measuring, put it to the eye pressure measurement that you're expecting. If you have no idea what to expect, put it to around 20. Once you're happy with your settings, look back at the patient's eye and check whether it's full of tears. If that's the case, dry them off because it's going to give you a bad measurement. If your patient is squinting or blinking too much, you can use a Q-tip or your fingers to open the lids. But please be very careful not to push on the globe as this is going to falsify your measurements. Next, you're going to put the joystick of your slit lamp all the way back and slide the whole slit lamp forward in the direction of the patient very slowly while looking at the patient from the side, not through the slit lamp. Once you're fairly close, you switch over back to your eyepieces. From now on, only use the joystick to move back and forth. A lot of beginners struggle at this point. You can see the measurement prisms perfectly sharp, but the patient's eye is completely blurred out. This can be very disorienting and make you scared that you're gonna hit the patient's eye too fast and hurt him. So if you have trouble orienting yourself, here's a little tip. Turn down the magnification of your slit lamp to 6.3. This allows you to see more of the patient's face and get a greater depth of field. This way you can safely approach the patient's eye and once you actually touch the cornea, you can still switch back to a 10 time magnification. Once you actually touch the cornea, two semicircles are going to appear. They might not look perfectly centered like this, but we're gonna talk about that a little bit later. First, let's assume you hit it perfectly. What you want is two semicircles that are the same size and touch each other on the inside of the arc. Do not put them straight on top of each other. So what do you do if your circles don't look like that? Let's go through a couple of situations that you might encounter and what to do in each situation. Situation number one, your semicircles are very small and far away from each other. This means that the eye pressure is higher than what you set on the machine. So you need to set it higher, but please go off the cornea to do so. Situation number two, 
The two semicircles are very big and overlap each other. This means that the pressure is lower than what you've set on the machine. You need to go off the cornea, go back a little bit and set the pressure down. Situation number three, the two semicircles do not have the same size. This means you're not in the center of the cornea. If the top one is bigger, you have to go up. If the bottom one is bigger, you have to go down. Situation number four, your semicircles are slightly off to the side and one of them is cut off. Of course, you have to move to the side of the one that is cut off, but please for that also, don't touch the cornea, come off the cornea, go over a little bit and go back on. There are a couple of ways how you can cause yourself some problems. One of them is not touching the cornea correctly. If you touch the cornea too little, the measurement is wrong. If you touch the cornea too hard, the measurement's wrong. There is a certain range where you feel like the two circles are kind of locked in. You have to find this range. Just slowly touch the cornea, move forward a bit until you feel like it's completely locked in. If you move further, you start to see movement again. Another one of the problems that you're causing yourself, I've already mentioned. If you're using your fingers or a Q-tip to open the patient's eye, you can apply pressure on the globe. This usually shows itself as a very volatile measurement that is changing every time you put the measurement head on the eye again. So if this is happening to you, try to lift up the lid without putting pressure on the eyeball. Another very common issue is too much tears. If your semicircles are too thick, your measurement's gonna be wrong. So try to dry off your patient's eye and measure again. Another common problem are pulsations. This is when the semicircles go back and forth with the heartbeat. Some patients just have that. So if you have the situation, just take about the average that you're measuring. That was it for this quick step-by-step -step guide. Please comment down below if you still have some problems, if you're still measuring something else than your colleagues and your superiors. I might be able to help you or some other users might be able to help you. But please do consider all the problems that I mentioned before, especially the one with not being locked in perfectly and the one with your fingers and your Q-tips putting pressure on the globe. If you're interested in more details about this pretty interesting technique, I will release another video. I will link it up here and down in the description. And until then, please subscribe to the channel and practice as much as you can.